Welcome to episode two of my RBS project number three. In this video, I make a decision about the motor. I do the design work for the board and I actually start to manufacture the baseboard as well. So I do the woodwork. Just like building a house, the first things you do, there's nothing pretty to see. So if you're waiting to see me doing all the solder copper work, then it's not there yet. We're still doing the electrics. We're still doing the baseboard before we do the electrics. But foundations need to be there. They need to be good. And it's taken a couple of weeks to do all the thinking and working out of what I'm going to do. So the motor I bought is really nice. It's really cute. It's really, really nice. Um, I love this brand. I love this, uh, this kind of size. It works really well for me. And for some reason, I decided to put it into a plastic box to kind of make it a tiny bit quieter. And I really don't like the box. So even though I put it in, I wired it up, I put the speed controller in, it didn't make enough difference for me to warrant the fact that this box was ugly. Uh, it's plastic, it's square, it's too big, it's cheap. Um, I even sprayed it with copper paint to try to disguise it and make it look a bit prettier. But at the end of the day, I really don't like it. So I took it all apart and decided now to just mount the motor on, on the top of the baseboard and have the speed controller going underneath. So in order to make the speed controller fit a bit better, I de-wired the potentiometer, the knob, um, from the top and made a few little, three little jumper wires just to test that to make sure it was still okay. And so the knob will sit on the top of the, of the panel, of, of the board and the PCB that comes with the speed controller will be hidden underneath. Now let's look at the design of the baseboard and where I'm going to put the electrics and run all the wires. Here you can see the baseboard that I've drawn to scale and in the back I've got the, uh, a view of the motor and the gear wheels in, a, in the approximate position that I think I'm going to put them. I've drilled a little hole here that will be where the wires come out that feed into the motor. On the front you can see a couple of switches that I've drawn and the speed controller knob. This will be on a copper plate that I will manufacture and bolt down to the front top of the baseboard. I'll make another little copper plate at the back. This will be for mounting the feed through uh, female connector and for the, the DC power to go in. Underneath I'm going to put a little black metal plate. Uh, I already own this, it's from an old electronics project that I was working on once. Uh, I saved it for a rainy day and so that's going to be placed on the bottom of the baseboard to keep all the electrics nice and protected. At the front here you can see the bottom of the switches and the speed controller. There's also room inside this pocket for the uh, speed control PCB and on here will be the 12 volt to 5 volt DC to DC step down thing. There's a little channel where I'll run the wires down and in the back here will be all the room for the USB stuff that's going to go on. There's a hole here to send the wires up to the motor and in here will be the uh, wires that come in from the, from the back panel. I really enjoy the uh, process of design work. Um, it's important I think to get it done before you actually start producing uh, anything where you've only got one shot at doing it. If I hadn't done this design work, I wouldn't really be sure about where I was going to put all the wires and whether they were going to fit. So a couple of hours drawing it all out on SketchUp, I always think is a good investment of my time. Because it makes the manufacturing process a little bit easier if you have a decent drawing to work to. Once all the design work was complete, I transferred the pocket dimensions and depths onto the baseboard using blue tape. This allowed me to then use my router to um, machine out to the right depth each of the pockets that was needed, taking great care not to mess the board up in any other way. I've got a trim router which is really easy to use, it's super lightweight, it's got speed variable control, my router bits that I own fit in it really nice and as a non-trained woodworker I actually found it really easy to use.
I'm really happy. I have finished the wood. It's all nicely done. I've got the holes in here for the switches and underneath I've got the pockets made for the electronics, the wires and the metal plate that goes around the outside. So that's really good. That's the milestone done. I can now actually start to, to add some plates for the switches and um, then begin to wire it all up. That's it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments on what I'm doing or any suggestions of how to do things better, please leave them in the comment section down below. Uh, next week, I'll be working on the electronics and soldering all the wires together to get the motor working on top of the board and the insides of all the baseboard will be ready. So next week will be the final part of gluing the foundations. If you want to make sure you don't miss that video when it comes out, you can click on my face right here and subscribe to my channel. So bye for now, see you next time.